Hey, Bison fans, add a little green in your wallet with the NDSU debit card from Gate City Bank. For every card order, Gate City Bank donates $10 to NDSU. Get your Gate City Bank Bison debit card today at gatecity.bank slash bison or instantly at any location. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra. Everybody, to this week's edition of the Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra. I'm Dom Izzo. We'll have a closer look at some football chatter coming up in our next segment as we'll turn the page now to 2024 and a check in with a former Bison great who's going to be playing football in the new United Football League. We'll do that in just a little bit. Big weekend of Summit League hoops on tap. The Bison men get set to be back home after two weeks on the road. And trying to get some wins, the Bison women will try to take their perfect record on the road to Denver and to Omaha. We'll start with Dave Richmond's team. The Bison men split two games this past weekend against Kansas City and against Omaha. Both overtime games. They lost uh, the game on Saturday night in Omaha despite having two separate nine-point leads in that game. Omaha sensation Frankie Fridler was just amazing, scoring 32 points against the Bison in the win, despite the fact that Damari Wheeler-Thomas went for a career-high 30 points for North Dakota State. They ended up splitting that as they won in Kansas City in double overtime on Thursday and then losing to the Mavericks on Saturday night. So the Bison fall to 1-2 and two in Summit League play, overall 8-10 and 10 on the season. But as you look at the standings, as we get set for another uh, week of play, it's hard to gauge anything yet, folks. I will caution you on this, that there's nothing to take too much from the standings other than the fact that we've played three or four games. St. Thomas and Omaha lead the way at 3-1. and one. I've had this asked of me, what happens if St. Thomas wins either the regular season or the Summit League championship? They are not eligible for the NCAA tournament because of their transition up to uh, Division I. So the second place team or the league runner up would take the automatic bid. Put those standings back up if you would, please, Eric, as we go through it here. Denver is at two and one. We'll talk about the Pioneers here in a second. They've got the outstanding Tommy Bruner coming to town. You see the Jackrabbits at two and one. They just lost at Denver. South Dakota State's still a solid team, but they're not without flaws. You see Oral Roberts at two and two. They lost to St. Thomas as well. They got beaten at home. You see the Bison, USD at one and two. And USD's lone win was against North Dakota State, of course. That came in Fargo. You've got UND and Kansas City uh, rounding things out at 1-3. and three. To the games this week, as we mentioned, the Bison are at home coming up tomorrow night as they'll take on Denver. That Omaha-South Dakota State game could be tricky good down in Brookings tomorrow. Uh, ORU goes to UND to take on the Fighting Hawks. And St. Thomas and USD should be fun tomorrow night. One quick word on that ORU UND game because we're going to see the Golden Eagles coming up here on Saturday. This is not the same team that we are uh, accustomed to. Yes, they still have Isaac McBride. Yes, they still have Kareem Thompson, two tremendous players. But Connor Vanover was facing Grant Nelson last night in the Missouri Alabama game. So we know Vanover, the seven foot five guy, is gone. Max Aismas is hitting game winners for Texas right now uh, in the Big 12. So yes, they still have some pretty good talent, but it's not like this unbeatable team that we saw last season with Oral Roberts. For the Bison, they have their work cut out for them. Tommy Bruner is coming to town tomorrow night. We just visited with Dave Richmond uh, about Bruner in our uh, last segment on Hot Mike. Bruner is the leading scorer in the country for the Denver Pioneers. He comes in averaging just over 25 points per game. In Denver, it should be noted, as you saw the league standings, they were picked last in the Summit League preseason poll. So it goes to show what we know uh, in the media about that. But this Denver team with Jeff Wilbrun in his third year as head coach, they have embraced the transfer portal. They have a couple guys that are in their third or fourth school. Be an intriguing game to see how this uh, plays out tomorrow night. But Bruner, definitely one to watch uh, coming in tomorrow night. We mentioned already the Oral Roberts standouts. I'll say this about St. Thomas before uh, we make the transition over to the women's side. What Johnny Towers done there in a couple quick years has made them already 
up at the top of the league standings, we know. Their talent, they lost Andrew Rohde, their best player. He's playing at Virginia right now in the ACC, and they haven't missed a beat. Now, they've got a tough road swing this week. They've got South Dakota uh, coming up, and then uh, we'll see them against the Bison here uh, next week. I'll be really intrigued to see how this plays out for them as the season goes along. Meanwhile, we mentioned it for Jory Collins' team. They go on the road as they'll, on the mirror scheduling, they'll go to Denver, and then they'll take on Oral Roberts this weekend. Those are two spots that NDSU lost last season. It's a revamped team, though, with four incoming freshmen. We featured a couple of them early last week in terms of uh, Mariley Simon with her con uh, contributions and Abby Krzywinski. They also have another freshman on the team in Taryn Hamley, the younger sister of Bison standout, Heaven Hamley. WDAY's Logan Campbell visited with the sisters about finally getting a chance to play together, this time in the college ranks. I didn't realize you guys were four, sometimes five years apart. <laughs> Heaven, did you ever think that you would play basketball with Taryn again? No, never. Um, it's just kind of crazy because it's like I'm 23, you're 19 now, so it's like we're on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. weird. When Taryn started getting looks from NDSU, were you excited or how are you feeling when you were like, okay, well, maybe she could be a bison with me. I was shocked at first because I was like, oh my God, like with COVID, like it actually could happen. How much of an influence did she have on your decision to come here? Quite a bit. I've been to like a whole bunch of games before that. So I just knew that this was the place that I wanted to be. Tell us a little bit about what your dynamic is like away from the basketball court. I'm a lot different than Taryn. <laughs> uh, I like to be outside, go hunting, go fishing. She was, that's not kind of what she is, yeah. but she's more like shopping and hanging with friends. We go eat together. We go get um, like nutrition drinks together. Little things like that is kind of like how we get along and that's what kind of makes us special. On the court, what are your similarities and differences? Yeah, I think just shooting threes, um, that's kind of what we've been doing since we were little kids, just chucking them up. So. <laughs> Um, that's a, a similarity. I think just like competitiveness, like we're both people who really want to win and we really want to like strive to get that next play and everything. So the way we compete is probably what sticks out is, is the most same for us. And they have stuck out here. No, Terrence already hit double figures in a game earlier this season against Mayville State. And Hamlin continues to rise up through the Bison women's basketball record books, already over 1,400 career points. and. Uh, the Bison are off to an unbeaten start in the Summit League on the women's side. Obviously, they had that win over South Dakota last week, and they took care of Kansas City and Omaha. They are tied with South Dakota State. As you look at the up-to-date standings on the women's side, both the Bison and the Jackrabbits each are 3-0 heading into this weekend's play. St. Thomas comes in at 3-1. They are tied with Oral Roberts, each of them at a 3-1 mark. We're going to see the Bison and Golden Eagles playing later uh, this week. UND at 2-2. Two two. The Fighting Hawks swept this past week as they also beat Kansas City and Omaha. Then you have South Dakota with Grace Larkins at 1-2. and two. That Denver team that the Bison are going to see coming up tomorrow, 1-2. and two. And then Kansas City and Omaha pulling up the rear. They've yet to win a conference game. I mean, this is, to me, I think we have a little more clarity on the women's side than we do on the men's side. I think there's a three-horse race for the women's top spot, and it's the top three teams you see now, the Bison, the Jacks, and the Golden Eagles. You remember, as I mentioned off the top, NDSU did not win at Denver or in Tulsa last season. They'll have to get over that hump. If, the, if they want to be considered in the league elite, they've got to win games away from Fargo. They were able to do that last year. Sometimes they won in Macomb. They won in St. Paul. They didn't win in Grand Forks. They didn't win in Brookings. They didn't win in Tulsa. They didn't win in Denver. They were able to get a win in Vermilion, which almost counts as two, considering how good South Dakota has been. A look at the league schedule for the games this weekend. We mentioned it's flip-flopping because of the mirror scheduling. The Bison are on the road at Denver tomorrow night for a 7 o'clock tip. UND goes to Oral Roberts. South Dakota St. Thomas should be fun. Not sure a whole lot of defense we played in that game, but it should be an entertaining one. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And then the Jackrabbits are on the road at Omaha and South Dakota State by all intents and purposes is still very good. They are not what we have come to know with Aaron Johnston's team who didn't lose a game of course last year in route to winning a game at the NCAA tournament. The Bison of course have not beaten the Jacks in nine years.
They'll have that opportunity coming up February 1 when South Dakota State comes to Fargo to take on the Bison. So there's your Summit League update on where things are at. I want one email I had coming in here. I wanted to uh, get to that here on the media zone before we go uh, to a break on this. Dom, as a, as a basketball fan, wouldn't it make more sense to have a national mid-major tournament rather than expect the Summit League champion to have any chance to do much in the big boys tournament? Compared to the FCS in football, the mid-major should have a legitimate route to a national championship. Well, I tell you that the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament is what everybody wants. Um, the NIT used to be that. Now that's going more the road of, of the big boys taking all the spots that the mid-majors would get. I think that's what everybody wants. What's what makes March Madness so much fun. And when North Dakota State was able to beat Oklahoma back in 2014, and when Oral Roberts made its magical run to the uh, Sweet 16 a couple years ago, that's what brings in the non-sports fan to watch those games. Or even a non-college basketball fan is drawn in when a 16 seed or a 15 seed is able to make a run like Fairleigh Dickinson did uh, last year. Appreciate that. When we come back, we'll shift gears and chat some football, including an update on a former Bison standout wide receiver and an early look at the top 10 for 2024. The Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra continues right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra rolls on. We're here each and every Wednesday at 1030. And we also talk football pretty much every week on this show. And there was some news, not only the fact that the Bison still have a couple of guys playing in the NFL playoffs, Christian Watson, of course, with the Packers, Cody Mauck, Josh Hayes, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers advancing on after their big win over the Eagles on Monday night. Former Bison is going to be playing again in the Spring Football League. Darius Shepard announced yesterday that he's returning to St. Louis and the Battle Hawks of the newly named United Football League. For those that aren't paying attention, that's now a combination of the USFL and the XFL. Shepard had a dynamite year last season in St. Louis. He was second on the team in receptions with 48, 519 yards and six touchdowns. He led the XFL in return yards and average yards per return with over 24 and a half yards of returns. He was named the special teams player of the year in the XFL. Actually got a shot with the Denver Broncos this past uh, training camp before he was released from there. He's basically been playing football nonstop for the better part of two and a half years. And he became a fan favorite in St. Louis, not too far from his home of Blue Springs, Missouri. He's going to be playing back in the XFL. We had a chance to visit with him last spring about his opportunity with St. Louis and a chance now to go back there play with the Battle Hawks. I try not to complain about it too much, but I, I've been playing football since 2021 uh, training camp pretty much the entire time minus a couple weeks, you know, so uh, my body's feeling it every once in a while, but you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to play this game. So I'm, I'm happy to still be around and do what I'm doing. Was there a time over the last couple of years, the, the grind of the practice squad, the USFL, even this past uh, few months in the XFL, so you know what? I don't know how much I want to keep doing this, keep grinding. Has that, <laughs> did that thought ever go through your mind? Yeah, you know, I, I think those things pass in your brain every once in a while just because we're human. I mean, there's times where you wake up in the morning, and you're like, I don't want to get up, but you just keep going and doing it because you know it's what you want to do. You know, you just, that's not really you talking, you know, it's that little person. So you got to push them away and, and silence them. Shepard, of course, at a brief NFL stint with the Green Bay Packers, launched on with a couple of other teams as well, but he's heading back into the United Football League. Those games will be available on ABC, ESPN, Fox, and FS1. The season begins at the end of March, combination now of the USFL and uh, the XFL. I know there's a former, a couple other former Bison players I was asked about, namely Destin Talbert and Dawson Weber, who each got uh, tryouts with the Seattle Sea Dragons. That was of the old XFL. Those contracts were then nullified, so basically they're up in the air to see if uh, they'll have a chance to play. That was the first day of uh, free agency for the United Football League, but Shepard ended up signing with St. Louis yesterday. Speaking of the new football season, it's never too early to look ahead for 2024. We just wrapped up the 2023 season last week in Frisco, Texas, with South Dakota State winning a second straight national championship, and only naturally you look ahead to 2024, which will be a year of change in the FCS as it has been for the last few years. Another team moving on is Delaware is leaving the ranks of the FCS. They'll begin their transition 
to FBS football and Conference USA this fall, so they're ineligible for the playoffs, ineligible to win uh, any conference title. The Missouri Valley undergoes another change. Western Illinois leaves, so the league is back down to 11 schools. Of course, they hired uh, Murray State did with a new head coach uh, earlier uh, last week as they come in. We'll take a look. This is my early projections for my top 10 for the FCS for this upcoming season. South, it's hard. You, you cannot pick South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits have won 29 football games in a row. They're number one until somebody knocks them off. Now, the intriguing part about this is the status of their quarterback. And Mark Gronowski, we had SDSU new offensive coordinator uh, Ryan Olson on the show yesterday, said Gronowski is still on the team as of now. Granted, he can leave whenever he wants. He's a grad transfer, so something to keep an eye on. The Jackrabbits, of course, open next season against Oklahoma State. The buys that I have in at the number two spot with all the momentum at the end of last season, with the amount of returners they have coming back, the Bison are poised to be very, very good in 2024. Of course, they open the season at Colorado against Deion Sanders' team. If you saw the news, Shadur Sanders, his son, said he's not leaving early. The, the date to declare for the NFL draft was on Monday. Shadur is staying, so he will be there as the quarterback of the Colorado Buffaloes and the Bison head there at the end of August. Montana I have in the three spot. Of course, they lost their starting quarterback to the transfer portal in Clifton McDowell. They still bring back a ton of talent. The Grizz and the Bobcats in Montana State at four are going to be heard from in the Big Sky next season. Villanova is the class of the CAA. I don't think it's Albany. I think U Albany is going to drop off. We already mentioned Delaware. Nova, of course, gave South Dakota State all they could handle in the quarterfinals of this past year's playoff. South Dakota I have at six. We'll see about the Coyotes for this upcoming year. They, too, have a tough FBS game to start next season. They play Wisconsin. We'll see if Aiden Bauman and crew can pick up where they left off. They lose the dynamic corner in Miles Harden, who's heading to the NFL draft. Their running back, Nate Thomas, is transferring. They do bring back Travis Tice. They have an intriguing team. Uh, we'll see if it's a fluke or if it's something they're building off for Bob Nielsen's team in Vermilion coming up next season. Idaho at seven with Jason X team, who already lost Giovanni McCoy, their starting quarterback, to the portal. They did add some players as well. Can they be in the mixes again? Of course, they made it to the quarterfinals this past season for losing to U Albany. Central Arkansas is the team to watch. The Bears did not make the playoffs. They have Sean Derek Powell back. We saw what he did against North Dakota State, running to the tune of over 200 yards in the game in Fargo. Keep an eye on the Bears this the coming year. Sac State at 9 and Youngstown State at 10. Interesting note to start next season. Youngstown State plays Villanova in the first game of the 2024 season. So an early look at the preseason poll, at least for me, for 2024. We mentioned, don't forget, we've got Summer League Basketball coming up for you right here on WDAY Extra coming up tomorrow night. You'll see Denver and NDSU. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock. The top score in the country will be here in town. Tommy Bruner and the Pioneers, they were picked last. We'll see if the Bison can get their first home conference win after they lost their conference opener to South Dakota right before New Year's. Appreciate everybody watching here. If you missed it, you can podcast it on all our Bison Media Zone shows on the podcast, the Google Play, and Apple iTunes. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you at the Shack tomorrow night and back here next Wednesday on the Bison Media Zone on WDAY Extra. How can you spot a true Bison fan? They have an exclusive Bison debit card from Gate City Bank in their wallet. Plus, they know that for every card order, Gate City Bank donates $10 to NDSU. Show your spirit with your own Bison card today at gatecity.bank slash bison or instantly at any location. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Member FDIC.